Hello and welcome to Nobody Wake the Bugbear. We are at the final question mark instalment of Green Tomb, the pamphlet one-shot adventure for the Mothership sci-fi horror RPG by Tuesday Night Games. I am Andrew and I am the warden for this evening and to my right is one of the players, John. Who are you playing? I'm playing Zachary Doppler, a corporate reconnaissance policy android. He's kind of real unassuming and seems harmless, but there's something going on in there in his little ticking android brain. He's already gone a bit mad once in the course of this sordid adventure. And to my left is Josh. Please tell us about your character. My character is Alec Jackson, and uh, he's a very technical guy. He knows about mechanics and robotics and all things electronic. He's got a you know repair kit with him that he that he keeps around from his from his dar. And um, quite recently, developed a bit of a habit of soma, uh, having looked at the uh, substance in the locker and decided to give it a try, knowing what it was. He may be developing a, a slight addiction. And lastly, we have Cade. Hello, I'm playing Sergeant Alistair Crowley. He is a burly Marine and he's looked into the void and unfortunately the voids looked back at him. Awesome. I'll give you a re refresh of the mission. You have been contacted by headquarters who has contacted your captain, Captain Rick Cortez, and he has shoehorned you into accepting the job on your behalf and has sent you in to the science vessel Lima to investigate why it is dead in space for three days. You are the only ship close by and have an opportunity to get first dibs on whatever you have to acquire. There's talk about cargo, talk about information on what happened, but you're not sure what you're looking for just yet. What have you experienced in the last few hours of this adventure? It has been about maybe two hours you've been on this ship. When we first arrived, we found a little bit of suspicious circumstance. Instead of being neat and tidy, things seemed to have been dumped on the floor in various rooms. But it was not long till we discovered a corpse. The corpse of the captain, who had been strangled to death. All the consoles in the room were smashed. That was the first corpse. We discovered what we thought was the second, but it was far more lively than most corpses are, and attacked us with a screwdriver. Bravely, Sergeant Crowley fought it a lot, and the android lost a sanity check and went into some sort of hostile factory mode, where he was overcome with corporate programming, which appeared to be very capable of killing something it finds out of order. So he was strongly engaged in the combat. Luckily, the third member of the party, Jackson, or as he's known to people who don't know him, well, Alec, Alec Jackson, the scientist, after rifling through some lockers, found a weapon, a stiletto knife. He also found several things, including alcohol and the drugs he is now currently addicted to after taking one hit. Furthermore, we uh, discovered the notes of the head scientist detailing some strange soil matter from an asteroid, which possibly contained a corruptive alien plant which seems to have been inhabiting the corpses because they ooze with green slime and behave unnaturally as though puppeted, as was pointed out copiously by the currently high Alec Jackson, who is freaking everyone else out because he can't get freaked out because he's high, but everyone else doesn't like hearing about all the intricate details of this alien menace. We are currently, after having encountered another body in the cryo chamber which seemed to have been partially flayed of its skin, which the android was able to deduce it had peeled off itself with its own teeth. We are now descending to the lower level of the ship, but something strikes us immediately as we descend. Not literally, but no. figuratively. Yes. Sergeant Alistair and Kay, do you have anything else to add? How are you feeling as a character in this moment? Uh, definitely feeling a bit shaky. The nerves have set in, the PTSD, the ringing in the ears. It's like I got shelled again. <laughs> Does he think it's just he's reacting to his reliving horrors he's faced in the past, do you think? Uh, it's certainly a stressful situation for him and um, the doctor being off or on his meds yes. and uh, describing certain alien situations is not very kosher. It's not, it's no. not going down well. 
Mr. Alec, how would you explain your scientist's behavior? Well, your behavior. Uh, well, I'm doing quite well. Um, <laughs> things are actually <clears throat> pretty, <clears throat> pretty good. Um, really loud noises when guns go off. So that's pretty obvious. I uh, knew that. Uh, I'm looking at this logically and objectively, and I'm doing pretty good at that as well. Looking at the facts, definitely something biological. Everyone seems to have soiled themselves, so to speak. And uh, we can see a little bit of green, a little bit of red. So whatever's been dragged away isn't fully taken over because the thing that, the thing, the, uh, what was it? The thing that we were fighting earlier had all green blood. Yes. All, and, and now I have a inkling that I should just play the rest of this as Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was thinking more Hans, Booby, and your white knight. It might be a bit of a tonal shock for people listening to all three episodes. Yeah, yeah but it would be. Yeah. Hans, Booby. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, are you ready to continue part three of Green Tomb? Yeah. Absolutely. Then the music will start and we will begin. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not ready. I was trying to be subtle. Everyone, after seeing this body in the hallway, please make a fear save. A disadvantage, because I'm an android. Yes, please. I don't even need to roll twice. You know? Uh, well, one, uh, I can't gain stress. Yes, but you still have to roll the save. But two, <laughs> it's a critical failure. It is? Yeah. Oh dear. So... Oh, hold on, hold on. Just stop for a minute. Cade? 66 over 44. <laughs> I got 100. <laughs> Two critical fails on a fear save. Is panic checks, is it not? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Any I, don't, any, I don't read the rules. Any critical fail is a panic check. First off, gain... Two. Two stress. I don't. You don't? Do I? No, I'm fine. Did you fail? I didn't make the check. Why not? Oh, no, no, I'm I don't, sorry, I didn't disadvantage. Yeah, no, I, I passed. 28 under 79. You are fine. I'm so fine. panic check is the D20 and you got to not go under your stress level, over. right? You have to roll you have under to your over stress yeah. your stress. God, if I fucking fail this, <laughs> I'll hate myself. Okay, I I pass. 15 over 5. Oh, 15 over 5? Yeah, I haven't been gaining stress for a while. <laughs> I have to roll over a 13. Oh, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> and if you fail, we all... Pa- you yeah. another fear check. That's a 7. Ooh. Oh, seven under 13. You fail. fail. Yes. And you panic. Yes. <laughs> First off, what happens to a Marine when they fail a panic save? Yeah, whenever you panic, every nearby friendly player must make a well, fear save. Can you, can you roleplay your panic a bit first? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, as I see the bloodied empty vac suit and the green trail, uh, green and bloody trail, my, like, my gun hand just starts shaking and I end up dropping it and like, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> the ringing just gets louder yeah, and, and just louder goes... and louder. So, disadvantage for you, for you. Alec. <laughs> Fear, right? Fear. Okay. 78 over 20. So you do not gain a stress. I don't gain stress. No critical failure. John, Mr. Zach? That's uh, 30 under 79. Ah, oh, you're an android. You're fine. No stress for you. Well, one more thing. Sergeant Alice there, and Alec, please roll a body save. 75 over 22. Failure. 23 under 33. Pass. Uh, you have two scores, which are double numbers. For... Yeah, he does. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> Mr. Alec. Yeah. You start coughing profusely. 
<laughs> you humans are useless. Two seconds afterwards, you drop your gun, you start going... <laughs> and, Zachary, your smell receptors go off. And so do yours, your natural sense of smell. You smell the breath that comes out of this, your friend. And it smells like decay and sulfur. You right, Doc? <laughs> Uh, Sergeant, mm. I suggest you step back from him. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. put my mask on. You activate your mask. Yeah, so, and then so that I just, want the rebreather feature to kick in. You just start coughing into it and the fog just goes... Well, poof, I, want the, I want the rebreather to circulate the air in the suit. Sure. Before we continue, we have one more thing to resolve. I need to roll on the panic table. You do. <laughs> so would you please roll a d20 and you're trying to get... No, you've panicked. I this panicked. is it. I had, this, this is, is what result. happens. Yeah. Let's do it. First panic check. Another seven. A seven. You gain a condition that's perfectly suited to what's happened. You gain the condition nightmares. Sleep is difficult for you and you gain a disadvantage on all your further comfort saves after you get out of this situation. Oh, we're not living through this. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and... What do you do next? Uh, I will pick up my revolver. You stay, no, I, I'll, I'll just say, you stay here. Sergeant, Alec, you stay here. Can you access my body cam? Yes, I can. I'll uh, switch to my HUD. My head's up to spot. Uh, also, here, uh, take some of these, uh, like two. You're going to need like two. Uh, they're painkillers. And you roll a, a D10 for each that you take for your health. But each one also lowers your stressed by one so you can take one or two well at least one will be good for your health but at least one stress will be gone down i'll uh i'll take one then yeah uh cool so you gain back what was that six six so yeah. you gain back six health so you're back at full and your stress goes down by one yeah i go down to 12 okay <laughs> okay because that's enough of that <laughs> <laughs> i will proceed forwards you want to take a bump? <laughs> oh, so I'm considering it, but yep. then... <laughs> I will proceed in front. Sure. You stay back and take some time to calm yourself. Copy. So you walk up to the hatch. Yeah. Which is a little... Just enough for a man to go through. Or an android. I will crawl through the hatch. And you open the hatch and there's a ladder going down. I will climb down the ladder. You climb down the ladder. And you guys can now see my view. Well, he, you can see my view. You yeah. can't. It's like... Every few seconds, just going... Ksh, ksh, yeah. Ksh. Just my arms. And just you, Zachary, enter what appears to be an engine room. Anything strange about this engine room? I do have... An, well, no, never mind. A corpse has been dropped from above and lies spread out in a jumbled mess of broken bones in front of the ladder. There are flaccid anemone-like protrusions about the size of matches hanging from his mouth and his wounds. You guys can see this. Well, you can see this now. Easy, Doppler. I'm not sure what it is. I start flipping through the, the book, the um, the plant book, to see, yeah. uh, like, I was like, interesting. This is fascinating to me. So I'm just trying to find, like, oh, I wonder what this is similar to. I'm going to walk as slowly as I can around the body and try not to disturb it. Sure. You can manage to go past it. You see a lot of heavy machinery and the equipment is the engine room, so it's got a lot of access panels and things like that to control the engine and other s the engine systems and maintenance, of course. Yeah, I'll move on through. After he moves out of that room, it's like, we should uh, stay one room behind? Yes, carefully now. Don't touch the body. You crawl down the hatch, Alistair and yep. Alec? Yep. Alistair, make a body save. 51 over 33. You fail. You, you sort of slow down, and Alec walks ahead of you, and you feel an intense itching sensation at the back of your skull and spinal cord all the way down to your back. Please make a stress test. Uh, He's already panicked. Uh, D20? Isn't he already panicked? No, just a stress test. Uh, sanity or fear? Uh... It says a stress test. I don't know if that's something specifically uh, it might mechanical. Be on your... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's rolling under the stress level. Yeah, isn't oh. that a panic? But he's already panicked. No, that's a panic check. This is a stress check. It might be something that's just left over from first edition, zero edition and one, first edition. So I'll just say you gain an extra stress. 
You don't have to roll. It's just oh, stress well, test. You, anyway. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what you feel. I'll, I'll uh, see him kind of twitching. I'll be like, uh, you know, Sergeant, you should probably use your rebreather. I'm going to come back and Nudge. like talk through the... I'm going to stand in the doorway. Sure. And I'm going to say, Jackson. Yeah. Do you mind if I borrow the flamethrower? If I'm going in front, I should like a weapon of some kind. You can have this knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am trained in the flamethrower. I'm. Not, I, are you sure? I may be an android, but I'm not stupid. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> I'm not stupid either. Yeah, you can decide what he would do. Would you give up your only major weapon? This is, like, a big thing for keeping me safe. Um... I also have a better chance of succeeding if I was to use it. You will be safe behind. I am going ahead. Yeah, um... Can you please take the knife? Okay, I'll take the knife. Thanks. <laughs> I'll stay close by, I promise. Just not so close that I get disadvantage on fear saves. <laughs> so, Zach, take a stress point. Because Alec can't be stressed. Not for another 30 minutes. Until he gets withdrawal. Yes, you have to take it again. Is there is there any way that I could just check for maintenance to see if I can help comfort him for like stress wise using my robotic skill? It has to be some oh comfort him. Yeah, comfort. because pain pain pills don't work on androids. No, but I'm wondering if there's any way that I could look at his circuitry or his like his robotics. Uh, it, with I, the knowledge that I've got, to, I think maybe if you had a science lab and special. You know, equipment to lay him down on a slab and start deactivating him and fingering, like fingering around in his brain. I guess. Mm. I would think it's certainly possible. It would, it would take time. Yeah, I'll just hope to use my electronic tools. Mm. But that's okay. Not as in access point at the back of the head and start figuring things out. It'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. involved him like limit, down. like turn the stress dial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's. <laughs> it, it's it'd probably be complicated. You could do it, but more in the science lab. Sure. Okay, I'm going to move ahead. Sure. Zach, you go back into the long hallway of with the my downstairs knife. lever with your single knife. And you can see it now. Tiny green particles can be seen floating in the air close to the cargo bay door. I can't talk to them, can I? We don't have short range comms. What suit do you have on again? Just normal. I'm just wearing yeah, I'm just wearing a corporate You can just yell, it's only one room away. There appear to be airborne particles. I would not advise going ahead without a rebreather device. Interesting. At uh, that, Alistair will put his in after the like the coughing and everything from the doctor as well. Sure. So, does the rebreather uh, does it need a separate oxygen? Or just be twenty minutes. That's why it's a rebreather. Bottle? Yeah. If you mm. use an oxygen tank, you can fit the rebreather to it. Oh, and at last, and that will give me the twelve yeah, hours. Sure. Because yeah. like the vac suit with, may not necessarily filter out <laughs> things, but adding a rebreather will help. You throw on the mask. Yep. And it smells a bit cleaner in your mask. Zach. Yep. You walk through with, the hallway with my flashlight shining in the. Was it? Is it light down here? Is yeah, it it's all lit. Oh, cool. The med bay and the science lab are to the north and the south of this hallway, with the cargo hold at the very end of the hallway. I'm going to go straight for the cargo hold. It's the mission. You go straight to the cargo hold. As an example, I just thought of for uh, the difference. It's like if you're using a gas mask because there's a a pollutant in the air, or you compare that to like firefighters when they're going in, they use oxygen as well. Yeah. yeah. They don't necessarily just filter out. They need a proper yeah. oxygen tank. Mm. But it's called a rebreather. Yeah. So. Yeah. It re what it generally, rebreather harvests excess oxygen from your exhalation. All right. You press the big mechanical button to open the cargo hold. This, this image of the episode, just my hand, like, yeah. like the, the me from behind. Danger. It opens slowly. Roll the sanity save. Sanity. I thought that was a critical failure. It's not, but it is a failure. Gain of stress? Yep. I'm at nine stress now. And you see a large organism seated like a fermenting dough in the middle of the floor. It resembles a gigantic gelatinous amoeba with tentacles like that of a sea anemone. I will come up behind. Uh, same. The translucent blob is resting on top of what resembles a sludgy pile of human bodies in varying degrees of dissolution. 
Flamethrower at the ready. <laughs> its shape is slowly pulsating and shifting. Spores sporadically erupt from newly formed cavities, together with tiny green particles. An intrusive stench of sulfur and decay are filling the air of the cargo hold. I shut the door. Again. I saw on the outside. I'm not in there with it. And you guys catch up. I turn around and I say, It is not our mission to destroy this thing. It is something to do with the cargo. If we leave now, the company will take care of it. Uh, you got your comms? We should hail the captain. Captain, can you hear us? You can't hear us this close to the cargo bay. Check my bias gunner. Gee, what do you think? I'm guessing nothing, but... Boop, 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 boop. You detect... Just, it's not sure what to make of it, but it detects a life form in the whole cargo bay is lit up like a Christmas tree. Right. Okay, so this thing is definitely extending out. Um, we can check the med bay in the science lab and maybe get Hightail out of here. I think that's a good idea. Agreed. We need to go straight to quarantine after this. Uh, which one first? I think the science lab would be safer. Uh, <laughs> it's possible the med bay is populated by patient zero of whatever this was. It's also possible the sample was in the science lab. Yeah, it could go either way. Does someone want to flip a coin? I don't think I've got a coin. <laughs> I'm not sure how that lines up with your company policy, Doppler. But let's go science first. Your, uh... Company's policy allows me to try and fraternize with the human employees. I think... I think I'll, uh... I'll just maybe suggest the science lab. Okay. Uh, and go with your first gut instinct. Science lab first, then. I'll go ahead. You stay out here for a second. <laughs> Zach, you go into the science lab and open the door. You see a glass containment unit which was used to examine soil samples that has been smashed. You find another cactus here. It is covered in a thick, pale green, slimy coating. According to its pot, its name is Robert. John and Robert. That's cute. Um, is there anything else? You see examination equipment and microscopes, electronic scanners, things like that. I would like to... I'd like to take my knife and try and cut the cactus. Sure. You guys are seeing all this on the... You cut the cactus, and you take a sample, a piece of it. It oozes green pus. Use uh, tools if you can to move the sample. Yeah, well, there's plenty of stuff around here I can use. To put it in a little jar. Like a containment of some kind. Yes. Although, I'm not sure that's a good idea. We have to assume that the scientist on the vessel took the required safety procedures, and yet it escaped containment. It's possible... That a small file will not hold it. Well, then we'll have to test it here. We don't really have to test anything, do we? Burn it and be done. We should not burn it. That is not our mission. We should uh, probably get up to the upper deck and hail the captain from there, but let's check out the med bay first. You know what's in there. Some equipment. Anything of value that you think we should look at? I haven't seen in there. Let's have a look. Before you leave, the glass container that's broken, does it look like it's broken from the inside out or outside in? Oh, we can see through his camera. Yeah. Does it, you're is the glass the on the inside oh, or the he's outside? Oh, you're out the side of the hallway? Mm. It looks like it's just been smashed. You can't really tell if it was from outside source or an inside source. You're not sure. It was a sonic blast. <laughs> uh, to the med bay. To sure. the med bay. Who's going in? I'll go in. Good old Zach. Good old sane Zack goes into the med bay. The room is left in disarray. The remains of an android are spread out on the floor. It has been cut into pieces with a laser cutter that has been left uncharged on the operation table. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm going to make a sanity check for that. I'm just about to call for that. Yeah. All medical equipment has been damaged in the struggle, but some supplies can be found if a search is made. But before you do that... Please make a check. 
of sanity. That's almost a critical failure. Oh, but it is still a fail. That's a 78 above 21. Oh my god. Wow. Take a stress. I'm at 10 stress. I wish I had critically failed, to be honest. Yeah. I want to fail now. <laughs> what do you do? What do you say? Were you shocked? I, 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 ex I examine the android's remains and see if there's a reason why it was cut up. It just looks like it's been aggressively cut to pieces. Without dissecting or, or method, just cut as much as it can. I'll, uh, I'll I go, go over in. to its head. You pick up its head, it's <laughs> very damaged, but it looks... And I reach inside to pull a tooth out. <laughs> oh god, you pull a, pull a synthetic tooth out. That's, you know, it's porcelain. I go in and I'm like, can I have a look? <laughs> Not at the tooth, the, and the android. We may be able to salvage at least some communications from the memory core. Non-corporate behavior detected. <laughs> Do you let him? I could look at re repair okay. maybe in the science lab. I've got some tools with me. There's a slab that we can use. Okay. All right. Come on in. Uh, we'll try and salvage as much equipment as I can. Uh, grab the laser cutter for charging later. Sure. Uh, is there any... Um open uh, lockers or cabinets here that is yeah. possible a second battery or something is available for the cutter you find the following you find one stim pack in one of the drawers of the med bay everything else is damaged cool. beyond repair so, so you I'll, get take, one stim pack. I'll take the laser cutter sure and if you want to take the stim pack I'll take the stim pack you can charge the laser cutter if you plug it into a Port. Yeah, I'll do that. It'll just take some more time. I'll leave it on charge while we move the Android pieces into the science lab on the on the slab. Sure. If you wouldn't mind giving me a hand and we can get this across. And then if I can have a look at it and see what's still intact, if there's a way that we can just even just get the head going again. Sure. Like, um, like alien. Like yeah, alien. literally. Yeah. If we can just get the head going again and I'll say if... If you want, you can maybe keep watch outside because it might be disconcerting for you. I want to look. Are you sure? I want to look. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> All right. I will try and get some juice going to its main components and see if we can get it powered up enough to communicate. Yeah. As you're doing all this work, your come down starts to happen. Sure. How does it affect you? You see me get like a little bit more like like looking around, just like a little bit paranoid. Yeah. Almost being like, I wonder if I wonder if anyone knows that I was just that I was high. We do. No one no one knows, right? <laughs> You're getting a bit agitated. You haven't finished your work yet and maybe things aren't connecting properly. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna make a say another sanity check watching you try to fix the robot. Roll a body save to see if you can overcome this feeling. Nope. 89 over 22. you got to have another hit. Right now. In front of everyone. Yeah. Uh, Alistair would have been out in the hallway. He's just fingering his grenade and staring at oh. that. <laughs> fingering his grenade? <laughs> no. That, that cargo door. You know how it's got that little ring pull on it? Yeah. You're just like, ting. Yeah, I've just like, it's all on my label here and I've just like got a finger in it and I'm just doing this. With oh it. man, i got to concentrate. So I'll take that bag out. <laughs> I watch you taking a hit of drugs while you're putting together an android, and I make a sanity check. Sure. And how did you go? And I roll 33 over 21. Oh, <laughs> God. Is that Thanks. for real? Lowest That's for real. Critical failure <laughs> that you could have rolled. That's okay. A... So first, you're making a sanity, aren't you? Yeah. And that doesn't have any extra effect. It's only fear saves. And you've passed or failed. You're taking another hit right I've now. I've taken another hit because I was like, no, I'm a dick. I, I, I can't get through this rest of this mission without it. So you get another hit of the drug. So we'll need to find out how long it yeah, lasts. It lasts for another. Seven hours. Nice. Much nice. better. You already have disadvantage on speed checks. So this will just reset it. Yeah. So how many days am I done for? Now? Nine days. Nine <laughs> days. <laughs> Disadvantage on speed. Nine. Your days. minimum stress increases by one. Oh, I'm uh, up to four. And roll a body save to not want to take another one, like in the future. Are you still addicted or not? Or 
We'll roll that in. We'll roll that in seven hours. Okay, so I've critically failed my sanity. You that's have. A sh- that's a twelve anyway. Now, just to ensure the audience, you literally rolled thirty-three, 33 above, yeah, above 21. twenty-one. Okay. Is there a table for that, or should I just role play it? The panic table. Oh, the panic table. Yeah, Please okay. roll. roll above you. Roll you your critical stress save. panic. D20. First off, gain two stress straight away. So now I'm on 12. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just leaning into the chaos, to be honest. Yeah. Because yeah. last time we were cowards. Yeah. That's a three. Oh. That's definitely under. You gain one stress. You are jumpy. All nearby crew members gain two stress. Not you, Josh. Because oh. you are... I am high. You're high. You are high. Okay. I'm in the hallway. Does that count for me? You are... Mm. He's not nearby. There's nearby, there's close, I mean, I'm probably away. within 30 he's feet, which is nearby. Yeah. yeah. So, too stress. Okay. <laughs> no, because so, he's in another room. Isn't that part of it? One of the descriptions? It's nearby is the range. 15 to 30 feet for nearby. Yeah. Okay. 10 meters. I thought he had to be in the same room. Far away is like 100 meters, 50 to 100. Sure. Zach reaches down. And turns his body cam off. Alistair? Uh, seeing the little window go dark in like the upper right-hand corner of my uh, view screen, I go, Doctor, Zachary. Zachary raises his knife. Oh. Oh, and what I'll, are you like, doing? I'll walk in. You walk in, Alistair? I walk in to see, the, uh, to see Doppler raise his knife. He Zachary, raises his knife. Zachary attacks Jackson with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> no. Roll a speed check. Me, both of us? Both of you. One of you at disadvantage, who is hyped up. Alright, so 71 over 38. You fail, you don't take a stress. Uh, 91 <laughs> over 27. Oh my god. You fail, take a stress. Alec, what do you do? You go first. So what I'm imagining is the knife just slams down, like, between your hands. And I'm like trying to pull it out now, pull it back out of the table. Is there a way I can disengage his arm? A bit of Winter Soldier action? <laughs> no. You can try to take the weapon as a, with a strength. I am not stronger than, than an android. Oh, I'm pretty weak. Same. <laughs> you can uh... flame his ass. Back away, Doctor. Yeah, I'll just. I think I'll just move away and get behind the sergeant. Sure. And I'll take the head with me. Done. Sergeant Alistair, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to, like, throw an arm over the doctor and, like, kind of help push him out into the hallway. And I'm going to draw my revolver and point it at... <laughs> point it at Doppler. And be like, Doppler, calm down. Whatever's going on, you need to explain yourself. My head's going to swivel around at you. <laughs> and I'm going to say, Corporate, Corporate reconnaissance policy. policy. And I'm going to pull it out of the table and try to attack you. Were you on the other side of the table? Uh, good question. Doesn't matter. It's close range. He can get to you. Ah, uh, bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, you rolled low on your speed. You Roll. can go. So combat. If you can, if you want. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I will aim for the knife in his hand. I will try to blow blow his hand. Sure, sure. That's a forty-two underneath sixty-four. You hit. Do your damage. However, the knife does not fly out. It's uh, just doing damage. It's only five damage. You take five damage, Mr. Zack, and I, now it is your turn. I drop the knife. I have. I brought some rope with me. Sure. I try and garrot him with it. <laughs> what? I try and wrap the, the rope around your neck. Do you want to use combat? Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, guys. I, I had to. It had to be one of us. That's a big fail. That's 51 over 29. Gain of stress. Do you want to move? Further. I'm going to run. I'm going to try and run past them. Sure. And then down the hallway. I'm going to try and get to the life support and turn it off. You make it to Alec. Alec, what do you do? Uh, I go into the med bay and grab the laser cutter. Oh, it's been charging. It's been charging. It's got about half an hour in. You run into the med bay and grab the 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 laser cutter. cutter. Yeah. Yeah. And you equip it in your hand. Yeah. And then I uh, go back after Zach. Sure. You are back in the hallway, but you cannot do anything. It's your turn, Sergeant. I proceed to run after Doppler. 
Sure. Uh, I don't know where he's trying to go, but whatever it is, after he's just attacked uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Alec, then it's not good. So I'm going to chase after him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just going, mm-hmm. Mister Doppler. Yep. Did you do any significant thing last turn? You didn't attack. You just he, used he, all he your movement. Did attempt to garrot oh, me. Yes. I tried to garrot you. So in you can only way. move nearby. Yep. So Alistair is now up to. Are you pretending to knock him prone? Yeah, I'd like to um, kick his legs out from underneath him and cool. stop him from Combat? running away. Yes. Go for it. Uh, it's a 52 under 64. You get knocked down, Mr. Zack. Yep. It is now your turn. I'm going to... So the significance of this is you cannot take a move. Act, you cannot move this round, but you can get up. Yeah. You just can do one other action, which can be to move. Stop, Doppler. What are you doing? I'm going to get up and run. You again. move again. Yep. You make it to the just to the start of the engine room. Yep. Alec. Hold him. And I'll run after him. You get up to him. And I try and take out a leg using my robotic skill for precision. Sure, you can add it to your combat roll. Yeah. Yeah, add robotics to your combat roll. Two under. That's a success. Yeah. He is down again. So I, I basically go up to him and I use it to precisely take it at not necessarily the joint where a lot of the circuitry would be to operate the leg later on but just below it enough that he can't use the leg anymore. Sure. Alistair. Seeing the incision and the damage done to the leg, I'll grab that leg and then twist it and try to remove it from at the heart. Do a combat. Do a strength, sorry. Strength. (laughs) That's an 81 over 31. Uh, Yeah. So you fail to do so. That that's fine. That's um, all you get. Can do I still have movement at, at all? You moved up to him yeah. and then did the action. So Zach, it is now your turn. I'm going to try and using the rope. Now I'm going to try to strangle Alec as he's hunched over me. Sure, you just like look up at him and loop it around. He try to loop it around. My his eyes, neck. my eyes, just bugging out of my head. Roll combat. Is there anything you can add? Um, jury rigging. <laughs> <laughs> the jury rig a grot? Not quite. No. What is it? <laughs> that is a uh, that is a one hundred oh over twenty nine. <laughs> That's critical, a critical failure. Critical succeed. Oh, critical success. What? Zero, zero zero zero. Oh. Oh, hang on. There's Earlier I got zero zero zero, and I said I critically failed because I thought a hundred was a. Uh... Nope. Oh, so I had a critical success on an earlier sanity check. Sure did. Too late now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said a hundred. <laughs> you made the, you made a TikTok on this. No, no, on Remember? how to read the That's dice. That's oh, for yeah. Paladin. Zero, uh, yeah, zero, 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 zero is 100. Yeah. But yeah. the rules for Mothership, I guess. Are, it's 100. Because it's zero, it's 1 to 99 is yeah. all your normal rules. And then zero, zero, zero is 100. Yeah. I thought you said zero, zero, zero was zero. So therefore, a Yeah, success. so you just told him it's a critical success. Oh, what did you get? I got, 100. A, I got zero, zero, zero. Yeah, that's 100. Yeah, yeah that's so a critical, critical failure. failure. Success. It's a failure. 99 is a failure. Oh, 100 is a success because it's the same yeah. as zero, zero, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I do succeed in garroting you. I'm yes. going to roll damage now. Oof. You can roll Hang damage. on, are we going back to the whole what is 100 and what is zero? No, no, zero, zero, zero is 100, which is a crit success. But they call they use it, they make 100 a crit success just because it was oh, okay. rare. Just hmm. very okay. rare. That's damage. Weird. Not much. I've only got 19 strength. So what equivalent weapon would you think this would work out as? I don't know. Probably bludgeoning to the throat, maybe like a, a improvised well, weapon. It's unarmed. I think it's, it's like hands. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like hands. So it's like unarmed. You do your current wounds in damage. I do my current wounds in damage. Okay. So so just three. Three damage. Okay. Does uh, doesn't affect me because I'm wearing my suit. And you get a blunt force effect on the critical table because you have crit. Yeah. And let's go to the critical table. Sure. Okay. Is there a way I can react to him doing this? No, this is just happening because of the critical. Yeah. Please roll a d10, Mr. John. You can roll it. I'm waiting for you to kill me. That's a six. <laughs> six. He pulls this rope so tight that it snaps your collarbone. Ugh. And you're in a lot of pain. Yeah. But you're not stressed. But I'm not stressed. <laughs> and now it is your turn. Uh, arm. Arm? Yep, at the shoulder. Low enough that it's going to disengage the arm so that he can't use it again. 
So he's got one. He's already got one leg in operation. So I'm going to try and take uh, the same sided arm. Sure. Try to do a uh, good old uh, with robotics. With robotics again. Well, that's not going to go. <laughs> that's not going to go down well. Ninety four over uh, fifty five. Nothing happens. Alistair, I'm going to move away. Uh, you move away. I just feel like no. You're protect. You're He's got it over I'm, your neck. It's right? wrangling you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just. Oh, I'm, it's still. It, it, okay. I'm gonna say. Um. I'm well, gonna, can I'm, I? Can I adjust if it's if he's still trying to strangle me? Can I adjust what I'm doing then? Sure. Carrying over that roll would a would a strength check get you out? Well, no. I just wanted to cut the rope with a cutter. Does that require a roll? Whatever you rolled then, carry it over. Would that Would that be the same with it? Well, what did you roll? 60? 94. But and what's your yeah. combat? Yeah, it would have failed anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. But you I just didn't know if it would have required a roll to cut a rope. That's no, it. just a, like a combat trying to... Shh, same roll. Like, I just want to go... Yeah. Yeah, didn't work. Oh, yeah. Mission, Mission success, success uncertain. uncertain. Human, Human element, element liability. liability. Mission success uncertain. Human, Human element, element liability. liability. Parameters changed. Parameters changed. Do you want to move? Twice? Well, my, my arm and my leg are cut, but not off. Yeah, you was can it still... Was not my turn? Your, your leg is inoperable. Uh, your arm's still going because I missed. Sorry, Alec had his turn. Now it's Alistair's turn. Yeah, Alistair's Go. turn. Uh, I'm not dying to a plant, and I'm not dying to a fucking robot. And I'm just going to re- revolve her against the robot's head and attempt to shoot him. Go for it. <laughs> uh, 75 over 64. I, I, dodge, I dodge my head out of the way. I just go... <laughs> yeah, just like go... I jerk my head aside. <laughs> Like hand solar. So take one stress. Yep. Would you like to move any f- place? Uh, I'm still going to interpose myself between the doctor and the uh, rampant sure. android. So picture the doctor is halfway on the ground. Zach, you're on the ground with this rope around both your hands, squeezing his collarbone. Yeah. And Alistair, you're just trying there. to get an arm in there and trying yeah. to grab a hold of the rope and get it away. Zach, it's your turn again. <laughs> I'm going to attack again I'm just gonna tr- keep going to like try and k- I'm sorry <laughs> you can either yeah stay in attack or attempt to get away I'm gonna stay in attack go you for it you're currently engaging in the harm of company property <laughs> yeah let's oh, go that's what I'm just, saying to him next turn intellect roll try yeah. to do that yeah that's a failure 46 over 29 then take a stress my stress is now 15 <laughs> <laughs> it is a very stressful situation Alec what do you do you are currently in breach of company policy. You are harming a physical individual. You must cease action immediately. Would you like to roll intellect? Intellect robotics. Or would you like to roll... Make him roll a sanity? I don't know which... What do you think would benefit you the most? How do you think you should approach this? I feel like my mastery of robotics would mean that I know what to say to him sure. to get him to stop and perhaps go back into a factory reset mode kind Let's of thing. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. <laughs> it was 92 oh. over 68. Human, Human element liability. liability. You can now try to move away. There's nothing else I can do, is there? Not with that. Try, you, like, try to do a significant yeah. thing, yeah. You can try to use your move to slip out of the rope, though. Uh, I guess I'll try that. Yeah. Do I have to do anything? Yes, make a uh, strength. I'm going to use my other tens dice. Sure. Would I be able to offer advantage because I've got a hand on the rope trying to free him? Yeah, him? you can have advantage. This counts as your your thing. Mm-mm. Roll it twice. Huh? Did you roll it twice? Oh, no, I didn't. Alistair is like using his action to... Still doesn't help. Oh, no. Like 48 over 24. So, Alistair, you can now move if you wish. Can't really do anything with my movement. Trying to rip my head off. You can move ahead of him in case he escapes, or you can just sort of stay put. Up to you. I I will work my way around the body a bit. You can definitely do that. So interpose myself like between the hatch and the android, but like still trying to help. Sure. So you sort of in between the corridor, between the engine room and the long hallway. Yep. Done. Zach. I try to reach into his mouth and pull his tooth out. (laughs) (laughs) So you have to let go of the rope then. Yeah. You are no longer held. Yeah, I'm just doing this in your mouth, like my, my fingers. Oh, gross. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a horror game, I'm sorry. <laughs> is, that a, is that a combat or something else? Yeah, I'd say it's a combative act. That's a failure. 32 over 29. Gain of stress. Josh is stressed. It's your turn, Mr. Alec. 
He's just trying to pry. He's in your mouth, trying to trying to get you like tentacles in your mouth. What do you do? Oh, okay. well, your vice is up, isn't it? Oh yeah, the vice. So is up. I can't even get through. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm trying to like my fingers are trying to bash through your thing, yeah. but I can't. I'm trying to pull your hood off. Main directive. Main directive. And I'm gonna try and get him to make a sanity save. Oh, try it again. That is a failure. Ninety two over twenty one. So what would happen, do you think? Will it pause your action for a turn? Will it completely turn it around? What do you think? It's not a critical. I'm trying but to overwhelm your system mm. so that you are forced to reset like cognitive process. I'm just gonna completely go limp. <sighs> and I'll remove the rope and then I will try and get to a power access on his on his body. The, uh, the skin on my hands is torn and there's like white fluid leaking from my hands because <laughs> I was gripping it so tightly. Sure. I want to try and I guess get to some sort of like access panel for him or anything that I could do for maintenance. Like put him into maintenance mode. Not without getting him into the slab and actually getting in there. They're not really designed for quick access to be turned off. Because like if I could just put him on the floor and lie him in the position that I would if need If he him. agrees. Well, he's limp. limp. Oh yeah, he goes limp. And you may start. Yeah. yeah. You got a screwdriver. You got a... I've got all the equipment I need as far as sure. tools go. All right. Roll uh, an intellect. Robotics? Yeah. Yeah, that's an advantage. 47 under 68. So you managed to gain access to the panel. Alice there? I will maintain a watch over over the two of them and hope the doctor knows what he's doing while he's gone limp. Sure. But I'll be ready to shoot again, I guess. Zach, you regain your function and are no longer limp. I need you to repeat the following numbers. 12. 12. 73. 73. What is your main function? Company, Company reconnaissance, reconnaissance policy. policy. Human life. Designation. Paramount. I'm going to be making small adjustments to your memory component for the sake of safeguarding your processes. Do you agree? <laughs> my thumb sticks up. All right. And my mouth's hanging open. My, one of my eyelids is drooping more than the other one. I attempt to erase the last hour of core storage and set him back. Initiative ends and please make an intellect roll. God, please work. <laughs> <laughs> 73 over 68. You fail and your memory is not reset, Zach. However, it is a moment of calm. How do you proceed? Initiative has finished. My head twitches. <sighs> my eyes try to like re-coordinate because one of them is drooping more than the other one. I look down at where my arm has been like severed. Not severed. Well, yeah, like cut, but not fully off. Yeah, disabled slightly, temporarily. I look up. What's the word I'm looking for is... Uh, root access request manual. Successful memory reset instructions. Steps one through five. And so it's like a re I'm like requesting to see if there's any sort of manual like that you could speak out so I could get advantage on another attempt. I'm, I'm blinking and twitching. I'm sorry, Jackson. You don't qualify, qualify. for those instructions, but it's all right. I, I, I don't think, I don't think I can do this, this mission. mission. Manual request, repair, AI processes. Step one, please. Okay, and then I, yeah, I, yeah, I can yeah. repeat that. So trying oh. to, instead of removing memory is to uh, restore yeah. Cognitive function to like normal levels. He said he could not complete the mission and he is now calmed down and mm. may follow instructions if you want to leave. Yeah, if he's if he's able to help me with uh, if we if we can say that we get him to like a normal functional mm -hmm. level and then we can go from there. He's compliant. Yeah. All right. And then I'll close the panel again. I will use some of my first aid kit to patch up just the the fake synthetic tissue that sure. I cut open 
and I'll say, okay, I'm trusting you, big guy. Destroy all your... <laughs> I think we have completed all mission parameters for now. Agreed. Let's go get paid. Agreed. Uh, I will rig up a harness out of that rope that he just tried to garrote the doctor with. Yes. And I'm going to walk up to Doppler and be like, this is just in case your leg gives out, buddy. I'm going to try and get you up the ladder. And so I'm going to see if I can rig this harness to uh, Zachary. And You you do it. Yeah. Thank You're you. able to take the time. You rig it. You get him up to the level, the main level. And you are now at the top of the hallway once more of the hatch, the empty vac suit sitting there. What do you do? You bugging out? Yeah, I will continue to hold onto the rope that is attached to the harness that is attached to Doppler. Sure. <laughs> uh, like one of those kitty leashes and just in case he decides to try and run off again. And Back to the main airlock? Back to the main airlock. You beeline it through the long hallway, back to the main airlock, and what do you do? You're in front of the airlock. Captain, Rick, are you there? <laughs> yes, you went dark. What's going on? We entered the cargo hold and found something. Something? Yes. Prepare three cryopods. We will need to be quarantined. Do you have a sample? Do you have a sample? I have the vac suit. Uh, it has mixed samples, both uncontaminated and contaminated. Zach, do you have a sample? I pull out my little bag of teeth, and I pull the teeth out. Yes, I have a sample. Activate company policy 66. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Cut his head off with a laser cut. <laughs> I have, I'm pulling that pin. I'll just because we are rip out grenade. of time, <laughs> and that is the end of our run of Green Tomb. Right at the end of the airlock from leaving the ship. And is he going to kill us? I don't know. Depends what Order 66 is. You're welcome for <laughs> giving you a narrative climax, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys feel? That's it. I, I'm so happy that I did that. Really? I'm so happy. I'm sure your teammates. I'm so happy that I successfully <laughs> yeah. performed an operation on an Android. But yeah, you got it. Yeah, my next turn was it would been nice grabbing to... you and dragging you up the hatch and just dropping the grenade down. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> really? Yes, I would have been. I would have been happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would have been uh, interested to see what the head, which I've still got. Yeah, has had to say. Yeah. I would have loved to role play that scene out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I took your thunder. But this is much. Well received as well. I was sitting here grinning like a loon <laughs> when you guys were playing, like role playing your yeah. um, robot and like just fixing. Yeah, I was trying. Like I was, root access and like. Just I was trying to be as scary yeah. as possible. Bad you know boy what I mean? over here. Yeah. <laughs> like I was trying to think what would we, like what's the scariest way it could all go. Like yeah. you know, like Five Nights at Freddy's, like the mini games where you're trying to fix the robot, and if you get it wrong, it like clamps your head yeah. shut. So everyone's putting away their dice because that is all we have time for. Unfortunately, yeah. thank you I everyone. Could, I could see that we're running out of time, so I was like, this can't just end with us going back up. I've got to do something. And I was like, I've been setting this up. It is a cinematic finish that is rounded off the adventure. That was Green Tomb, a pamphlet adventure, I should say. Who's it by? That was Green Tomb, writing and layout by E.K. Hill at Silver Hooves Fun. All one word. We have been playing the first edition preview of the Mothership sci-fi horror RPG by Tuesday Night Games. Thank you very much for listening and watching, and we will see you next time. Bum, bum, bum. Thank you, everybody. I won't be playing an Android next time. <laughs> Unless you roll again. Unless I roll again. chaos. <laughs> Embrace I'm just too chaos. Good. I'm just too good at role-playing Androids. Don't know what that means. I'm here to kill chaos. Imagine if I had botany and ecology. Yeah, that would have been quick. Yep. <laughs> And lastly, we have Cade. Hello. How about your character? Sorry. <laughs> Hello. You want to start again? Or? 
And lastly, we have Cade. Bum 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 bum. You're gonna make some music this time. Bum 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 bum. SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward. Well, if you send it to me, I can make the music. Okay. Plankton. Bum 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 bum. Hello. Ah. According to its pot, its name is. I just, la, la. I just noticed this. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Doom. 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 I was like, I could just fire the flamethrower at this blob, like, uh, just waste it with all four charges. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not our job. We weren't told to destroy anything. Sorry about that. Well, I'm not going to be in favor of destroying, destroying it. I'm okay. an android. Moving on. Where were we? Before we start. Are you all good? Well, all ready? He's got a ringing ear. He's twitchy. <clears throat> You're just generally weird. You're <laughs> generally weird. Let's get back into character. All right. So I quick, mean, 30 seconds. Having th- thought about it a little bit more, we I literally could just be twitching and he have a ringing in his ears because it was just a really loud noise. Yeah. Hmm? He's just trying to freak us out. Yeah. I my feel voice. Like that's a, a fair, fair thing. It's funny, my voice impersonation started as kind of an impersonation <clears throat> of Michael Fassbender doing an impersonation of Steve Jobs. This is a product launch, not a luncheon. Are you ready? I am very full, but I am ready. Lean back a bit. <laughs>